mean, and, and then there's the flip side of like, when you are a girly girl, you're not taken seriously. Right. I yeah. mean, that, that's the whole point of Legally Blonde mm. is, and the interesting thing about Elle Woods in Legally Blonde is it's at first she's perfectly content to be the dumb blonde because no one has ever expected anything of her except mm-hmm. to become a Victoria's Secret model, as she says, and then to marry a good man and be, you know, the rich trophy wife like her mother. But when she finds something she wants and she discovers she's actually good at it, she still has to struggle against everyone else's expectations of her. And, you know, speaking as a girly girl, there is that where it's like people don't take it seriously and they do kind of automatically assume, oh, you must be a bimbo. Mm. Oh, anything, anything for women is seen as less serious or actively unserious as opposed to things for men. I mean, mm. you look at, even if it's male boy bands, it's for women. So mm-hmm. it's it's less it's less good than, than rock music. And yeah, it, I mean, and, and I suppose the thing as well that a lot of people don't want to talk about is a lot of that kind of prejudice as well does come from other women. Oh, yeah. I don't understand why, because it's, um, I, I do understand why because it's it's because I suppose kind of the girly girl thing is not taken seriously or seen as like lesser. It's kind of wanting to distance and not be associated with that in order to like yeah like self preservation thing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's think... all the girls who lie about liking pink, saying oh no I don't like pink that's too girly. Yeah, whereas I, I, I remember saying that when I was a little pink. kid. <laughs> yeah, I hated pink. I still hate pink. I'm, oh, all the Valentine's Day stuff is out of the stores right now, and it's like I go. There's a huge display at the local Walmart, and I go in there. I'm like a vampire in sun, like <laughs> like I'm in a stereo at the end of Baldur's Gate three, just running because all of a sudden I can't be in the sun anymore. Right? I'm like, I, I have a visceral <laughs> reaction to that pink. To pink. Whereas, I don't like, mind pink. It's hot. I'm not keen on like really bright pink. Soft pink's all right, I, but I don't. I don't really suit any pink colors, so I can't really yeah, wear them anyway. But... Me particular Valentine's pink that has a little bit of blue in it, and to me, it looks like like the color of sickness. <laughs> and, and I and I, I, I and like see see even Barbie pink is too pink for me. Yeah, yeah, but, like. I still like pink. I like flowers. I like soft, pretty things. I, I mean, like, so we're both redheads. We look like clowns in that pink. This like, is true. Yeah, there's part of the reason there's an aversion to that. But I still loved, I wore pink to see Barbie just because I was so happy to see something finally hit. Yeah. And it was unabashedly girl. It was smart. It said something. It was challenging enough that I think we did three hours with Bobby yes. on it. You know, the pros and cons. It said something. And it just, like, here's a shining compare and contrast of what we're talking about here and a modern day woman of valor. Because I don't know if you guys followed the Christopher Nolan Peloton thing when he got the Director's no. Guild Award and got up there and complained that a Peloton instructor didn't like Tenant. No, I was confused what? until you gave context in your Feedback Friday video. Yeah, um, Christopher Nolan accepted some Directors Guild Award. And in his acceptance speech, he's won an award, right? Made it on top of the world. Um, and he starts talking about being on his Peloton and the the Peloton instructor using a soundtrack piece from the movie Tenant. And the the instructor, it was a woman, said, "As okay, this is from Tenet. Has anybody seen this movie? Did anybody understand what's going on in that movie? This is two hours of my life I didn't get back. So when <laughs> Christopher Nolan is accepting for probably Oppenheimer, he's complaining about the bad reaction to Tenet. And Tenet, I didn't hate Tenet. It's certainly not one of his best. Mm. Tenet you know? was weird because like didn't the characters not have names and everything was all weird well the movie yeah, half of the so. movie runs backwards and it just it, it it is okay to have one clunker movie but the fact that at a high moment he decided to complain and that it made headlines but of course the peloton instructor was much more of an adult about it 
when it came out and she said like he can come back to my class anytime he wants and gives me any notes he wants right but then <laughs> Margot Robbie didn't get an Oscar nomination for Barbie which what the fuck is that well it touched off a whole thing but she was so classy in yeah. her statements about it and this is where Margot Robbie showed more strength than Christopher Nolan did this is modern day mm. valor that she said I can't be sad because I see the cultural phenomenon. I've never been a part of this. I've been in superhero movies and that was big. That was iconic. But this, I've never been a part of anything like this. And I just thought that that is such a bold contrast, right? That this the successful director series gotten all these awards all these nominations complain 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 about the one person who didn't like his thing and that's considered fun oh he's a tough strong leader she walked it off yeah i hate i i hate to play uh i hate to play the gender card but i do feel like if that had been a female director or someone who'd like made a comment like that that it would have been a way bigger deal um oh yeah oh, absolutely like, really, like, really bassett bitchy. making a face yeah yeah, like you're bitchy, you're jealous, you're, I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah, I do kind of feel that. that well, that's what the Peloton thing. instructor took of, oh, she was rude and all that stuff. I was like, come on, everybody thought it, you know, learn to take but, a little, like my, yeah. my thought about the whole thing was, come on, Christopher Nolan, you have money, pay a personal trainer, you cheap ass bastard. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, what are you doing on Peloton, bro? Like perfect, <laughs> perfect advertising for Peloton. Yeah, they should do it again. But then you look at somebody like Ryan Reynolds, who would have handled that very differently. Oh yeah. Uh, but I mean that that just that just brings it into focus, right? Like, yes, mm -hmm. a woman would not be able to get away with what Christopher Nolan did, or let's face it, half of the behavior that Donald Trump does, <laughs> uh, or or a guy like Russell Brandt brand i mean a woman just couldn't get away with that mm. but women get away with a different type of bad behavior in yes. that yes. you know victimhood thing and, yeah. and i i won't do this and i real this is this frosts me because i know i would be further ahead if i was remotely capable of playing the victim just thinking about it is actually making me nauseous <laughs> like i feel like i'm going to barf right it is not in me and it's so frustrating because I know during some of those, you know, internet shitstorms I was in the middle of, if I'd just gone, I am being harassed, like, save me. You know, if I'd just done that, I probably would be making a lot more money now. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to live with myself. But it, when we think about, quote unquote, feminist voices, it's not the people that make the most sense. It's the people that draw the most hate and therefore get the most white knight articles. Uh, discuss. Yeah. What do you think of that statement? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think, I it's, think well, true. you know, I, I was going to say you might have made more money, but uh, Anita Sarkeesian is not making money anymore. Well, that, so... that yes, yes. I, I try to not say her name. Because, Sorry. well, it's just because people are like, oh, you're the anti Anita. And it's like, no, I will not be defined by somebody else. I will not be the Robin to her Batman. I will not be the Joker to her Batman. Like, no, no, I'm my own superhero. Thank you very much. We don't even do the same thing. <laughs> but the minute you get, I don't even know who, if you know who this is, Galatea. Anita yeah, Sarkeesian? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because my latest, um, uh, university lecture, the students there didn't know who she was. And it's the first time. And that was sort of a weird moment because I had this whole point of point of reference rebutting the whole in the game between Mario and Bowser, Princess Peach is the ball. I had a whole rebuttal point and I wasn't getting the nodding I used to. That's how much the influence there has dropped off and why mm. the entire brand was I was harassed I was victimized. And you think of the other women who kind of come to mind in the gaming discourse. It's the ones who were harassed off the internet or harassed for a part, or it's what was done to them, 
not somebody like an uh, you know an Amy Hennig or the combat the combat director for Dad of War or any of the women actually making stuff and doing mm-hmm. cool stuff. It's what was mm-hmm. done to them. And I mean, okay, personal bias declared. Having fought this, I you know I have skin in this game, but I think that's a problem. What do you think? I mean, I would agree. Because, mm-hmm. like you said, it's not wanting to be defined by someone else, which also is. Well, women like... don't want to take point on projects because they don't want to do the presentation because they don't want to be spotlighted for that. They just want to do their jobs and not be the center of attention because they don't want that attention. And quite frankly, I think we all, you know, we've all here been subjected to some of that nonsense. And it's not that bad. It's scary the first few times and then it's just annoying. You know, it's not terrifying. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're like, well, that person was scary. But for the most part, they're just idiots. It's just noise. You know, Mm -hmm. but every female Star Wars character freak out every uh, what was the latest one? Um, Oh, there are so many. I can't keep track. (laughs) I've never, you know, I've never seen Star Wars. So I can... Wow! I know. I what's mean... it like? <laughs> I, I no. What's it like? So if I say there is no try, do or do not, it's like nothing. It's that there is no what? There is no try, <laughs> do or do not. Oh, my dad used to say that to me all the time. So <laughs> <laughs> your dad was Yoda. <laughs> yeah, you the no, whole baby annoy... Yoda thing. Just oh, nothing. It used, to, it used to annoy me so much as a kid when I say I'm trying. You go, there is not no such thing as trying. If you do what you know, I'm like, oh my god. Um, now they crib that quote from an ancient yeah. Greek philosopher. No joke, but, um, uh, and and Confucianism. Yeah, no, but I've never, I've never, I should, I know I should watch Star Wars. I have to watch Star Wars at some point. But you know, it's a sci. I've never been a big fan of sci-fi, like the kind of space stuff. I really I like mean, fantasy, but Grant, yeah, Star well, the Wars. The original is... three was space fantasy. They were space opera, and then it shifted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Watch the original three. And like, yeah, I really should. <laughs> if you like those, watch The Mandalorian because The Mandalorian yeah. is the, fun. The but first th- two seasons. Th- yeah, that's all. After yeah. that, you're good. Um, no, uh, Liana and I are both huge Star Wars fans. And like, I grew up reading the extended universe books. And oh God, so much of my identity as a kid, I, I was mocked as a child, very bad and like preteen, very badly for being obsessed with Star Wars. And now it's so popular and I see all these people who are like, oh, look, it's Star Wars Day. And I'm like, fuck you. You're the yeah. same people who would have been. <laughs> I, I actually asked my, my sister shared something last May the 4th. And I'm like, do, do you remember how badly I was bullied for this? And she's like, no, no, <laughs> I, I don't do that stuff anymore. I don't because that's basic. I yeah. I just move on to I like shows that no one else has watched because then I don't have to see shitty takes <laughs> <laughs> at, at this point it's you know the, the thing about being someone who grew up with all this geeky and nerdy stuff is like now it's become mainstream mm, and yeah it's not as good as it used to be <laughs> Well, it, it's, yeah. also, it's also that thing of sort of required watching. That's why I'm like, what's it like, Galatea? What's it like to not <laughs> feel forced to watch every single thing that Disney Plus drops because yeah. you're going to nerd pretty check great. you on it? Like, I want to live in your world. Yeah, pretty great. Pretty, pretty free. It was because yeah. I had family friends as a kid um, and their family were all boys. Right. And they used to, whenever I, we were at theirs or they were at ours, they just used to pop on star wars and watch it all the time and i was just so bored i think i i think it was because i'd seen a few snippets of it and i just like uh, i i don't know they always had it on and i would i just became something immediately i was like i'm not interested in this your star wars is my pride and prejudice (laughs) oh okay (laughs) oh my god it was on all the time and it was that uh colin firth oh Oh, yeah and so it was on all the time and I, I hate it i hate it i hate it that i i watched emma thompson's adaptations and enjoyed that emma much. thompson did sense and sensibility yeah like her mm. jane austen stuff but i wouldn't touch any jane austen because it was so rammed down my throat yeah. and see i'm over here like i love both and i 
a few months ago, I learned that my boyfriend had to read Pride and Prejudice in college. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. Because <laughs> it but, like it was presented as, oh, it's so romantic. And no, I mean, my idea no. of what's romantic is very different. But it Austin wasn't romance. It was social commentary. Yeah. Mm, and yeah. It, it's yeah. like, you know, I I keep my Jane Austen books on the same shelf as my Conan the Barbarian books. I can see the, I mean, talk about women of valor, right? Yeah. And it's like, they sit right next to each other because like, those are my two favorite authors, which just feels like <laughs> just the contradiction of my entire identity. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, it wasn't until I was an adult that I realized that Jane Austen is stories of women who now would be told to smile more. Pretty much. Yeah. Mm. Now I'm good with it because of that. But it's I, funny how the way we're exposed to something colors our opinion of it. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I think I just associate it. I was like, oh, there's just the boys watching boring, damn weird stuff right. again that I'm not bothered about. And they were a bit younger than me as well. So I was just really not, not, you know, interested. Yeah. Um, if they'd been older, actually, that probably would have been different. I'd probably been more interested in it. But I was just like, <laughs> younger kids. It's baby in stuff. Weird yeah. Stuff. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> I love it. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. <laughs> Because <laughs> I mean, see the most it, the most romantic thing I've seen in a while is our flag means death, and you know it it gay pirate show, <laughs> our Taika Waititi. But I'm like I'm invested, and I don't know why. <laughs> no, it's actually about characters, and that I think when we talk about strong women, that idea of that character getting wedged into the love interest role is something we need to talk about. And I think part of the reason I like Our Flag Means Death is because it was two guys. They weren't allowed to do that. You know, it's Steve Bonnet and Steve Bonnet and Blackbeard. They can't. And do what? Do well, they can't shove one into the love interest role because they're both men. They both have to be allowed to keep their balls. Mm. And if we wrote female characters, having them, you know, they have to be able to keep their proverbial balls. I think we get less of this. Um, oh, what's a what's a, a a common thing? You know, the Handmaid's Tale thing of it's all about what you can endure. Mm. I mean, if you look at the best actress nominees, it's all tortured women, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all adversity and it's all struggle. And it's not like Barbie didn't have struggle, but she was, you know, telling a story from the point of view of an icon and finding out that that really painful part of the people who don't like you. Th that was a more nuanced story that I think the award circuit wasn't ready for. So like, oh, no, let let's just throw awards at Emily Blunt and M Emma Stone crying again. Right. <laughs> mm. you know mm. uh, what what do you, what do you guys think about that because women can only like we were talking before women can only make the stuff the system lets them make and so we do have to sort of i i know on television there were a lot of things that there were a lot of fights i lost and mm. then i got judged by that product how could you be a part of that it's like well, I was under contract. You're okay with that? Mm. I tried. You don't win every one. You know, and that's considered race trader territory. But it, it's true. You can't fight everything because then you're labeled uncooperative and a bitch, mm. which is why I can't stand that word. It's so lazy. Yeah. But how how do we possibly solve that problem without doing the... 80s androgynous you know let's get boy haircuts and don't wear makeup you know wear Birkenstocks all that stuff that's not even 80s that was more 90s I, yeah I, 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 I don't know if that goes back to kind of women being people being cautious about women not being taken seriously yeah so in order for that to happen they've got to be really serious characters or serious struggles I suspect um I suspect, I don't know, how do we change that? Probably, probably time as we kind of get, yeah, I think, I think maybe that's the only thing that will kind of, you know, do it is, is, is people kind of lose those, 
ideas or maybe those kind of remnants of and also probably feminism letting go of the helplessness thing and maybe that's now become a kind of large-scale societal defense mechanism for women on mass is that maybe they feel or maybe they've been conditioned rather that maybe on a large scale some women feel that the only way that they can exert power is by a helplessness that's um, it's actually which... a funding thing but i'll i'll stick a pin in that mm -hmm. yeah um, yeah so i mean yeah i don't know um if that, song, yeah. what, so song what do you think i'm not sure <laughs> right um with this i i think it's something that's going to take time like you mm. know th this summer this past summer we had the whole i don't know what it's being called but it's like we had barbie and we had the eras tour which regardless mm. of my opinions on taylor swift it was it was a huge summer for women yeah and it was women yeah. proving that they'll put down money for stuff if you cater to them in a positive way and even saying catering to them sounds wrong but it's not pandering actually right. catering to them and giving them what they want and i think i hope it's not just a one-off summer where we got to see this like if we can continue that momentum i think mm. we can start to have more discussions about it I, mm. I would hope we can have more discussions about it and things can I'm, I'm being surprisingly I just idealistic because like I'm someone who's sitting here going balance is impossible we will never achieve world peace and there will always be inequality somewhere we I, can do better though yeah we can absolutely do better yeah and so like I I would hope we can start to have those conversations and that we can find a form of feminine empowerment that doesn't lean into this girl boss idea where women have to behave like men in order to be taken seriously mm -hmm. because i mean there's talk about like the wage gap and everything and it comes down to oh well women aren't taking the higher paying jobs well why aren't we paying female dominated jobs a fair mm -hmm. wage you know galatea has talked about how her grandmothers and i believe aunts as well have worked in care mm -hmm. and Nothing, how yeah. it yeah and how it broke down their bodies and like why yeah. why aren't we paying teachers a better wage and it comes down to we're not really addressing that part of the pay gap is it's not oh women don't want to do these harder high paying jobs with higher stress no it's because we're not paying a lot of these female jobs the wage they deserve yeah the yeah. minute it's considered a carer profession you get shafted yeah right i mean the fact that you know mental health crisis lines are staffed by volunteers is something that just makes me want to puke because mm. think about it right you're at a low point in your life you're calling this line you're reaching out to help and you're getting a volunteer mm -hmm. who had mm -hmm. nothing better to do that day that's scary why aren't these people being paid because who yeah. who wants to pay who wants to pay to prevent something nobody nobody gets a pat on the back for preventing mm -hmm. yeah I mean, you know i think so that that goes back to kind of what you were saying earlier about women's kind of work in general mm -hmm. um not taken seriously or feeling devalued whether that's i guess mostly in the home um or outside of the home but you know th that brings me back to like an interesting contradiction um i don't know if it's a contradiction but just an interesting thing that i see a lot in some of these red pill spaces or, or these people who are really want the trad thing on the one hand they're telling women that um women should stay at home that's your place you should be happy there that's what you should want to do <laughs> yeah um but, but at the same time as they're saying that they also have the narrative of oh and by the way it's really easy it's really stupid that work it doesn't have any value in society it means that you shouldn't be able to vote which a lot of them do say you shouldn't be able to vote because what are you doing oh you're just cleaning you're just cleaning a house and i'm not trying to disrespect like stay at home people but this is like their attitude they have it's like mm -hmm. oh you're just sitting at home all day or as one person I did a video on said one young woman phrased it um 
you know, we women have an easy life. Just what did she say? What did she say? Oh, it's like, um, yeah, men men should have more say or something because they go out and do all the hard work and we just sit at home relaxing. I'm like, sorry, which world are you from? Like, yep. say you're spoiled without saying you're spoiled. Oh, I, but, I don't rem- I think that was when you did the video on Leah. Yeah, that was Leah. That's what she said. Um, she said, oh, God. we just sit, yeah, sit at home and relax. And it's just like, but she's put, but she's, t- this is the thing. And this is why women like, her kind of become so successful in these spaces because they're telling men what they want to hear. So men are hearing, oh my God, a woman is saying this. Right. Oh, women just sit at home and relax. It's easy. Being a housewife. Is... And how do we think that that's going to look for gender relations down the line or a marriage down the line? Mm-hmm. If you've got a traditional relationship and the man is out earning the money and a woman's staying at home raising lots of children and he thinks that what she does is easy and worthless and well she's going to get really really burnt out and i would guess that that marriage is really going to break down at some point that's not oh absolutely well and Um, and what do we hear in red pill spaces they talk about the loneliness epidemic among mm -hmm. men right what do they think happens to housewives and stay-at-home moms oh absolutely there's so many of them are so lonely especially now without communities like this is the thing this whole the other thing with this trad idea is that in the past, well, firstly, oh, um, Mary Harrington talks about this, about, you know, this idea that women never worked. Well, in the past, you know, women would work inside the home. So like weaving was always a thing that women would do because it's easy. You can look, watch children as you're doing it. You can stop and start. And then, of course, in- industrialization, taking that out away outside of the home. And that's when things kind of get complicated. But also at that time as well, um, you've got communities of people you've yep. got mm-hmm. there's a you, you, no one's going out to work and the, you know the men probably are working near the home or outside like as in yep. just outside the home um but still like there the, everyone's there your parents are there your your grown up siblings are there you know aunts and uncles there's and a like, community of people you're not alone but now like a housewife it's, it's a rough so many, gig and like but, even even in the 50s when the suburbs started to become a thing you knew your neighbors yes and yeah. so like you could even if the husbands are away working in the city, you know, you can go over to your neighbor's house who she's probably about your same age and probably has a kid about the same age as your kid. And you can say, Hey, can you watch him for a couple hours while I take care of this? And it's like the, the, this idea of the fifties housewife, even if it was realistic and if it could be done it can't be done without a proper community. Mm -hmm. And so unless we have community, these women will end up burnt out, lonely. And we see it even today. You know, you you see stories from women online who were just, granted, some of them may be made up for attention. But it's like, I, they talk about just being so, and I think this is part of why postpartum depression is such a big deal nowadays. Yeah. Is, part of it is hormonal issues that we don't address properly but also it's just you don't have that community you don't have someone who can take your kid for an hour or two so you can just take a shower or you can do what you Mm. want and we don't we can't send our kids over to people's houses anymore because we're all terrified of sex offenders yeah that that one hit me between the eyes yeah Mm-hmm. That people don't have sleepovers anymore. Mm-hmm. Yes. And like, I remember yeah. when that started, because like I was in my teens when I remember that becoming really big and that awareness and people were starting to say, don't send your kids over to other people's houses. And Did you, um... sorry, we... sorry go no, ahead, go Galatea. no, I was just going to ask if you saw Lauren Southern's video um, a little while ago. So this is the interesting thing that we're seeing now that these like a lot of people who are promoting the whole trad life thing, they're finding that it's not realistic and it doesn't really work in the modern age as yeah. as it shows. So like Lauren Southern, who a few years ago, she was like this firebrand, you know, conservative who was saying um, women, like single mothers are, are the problem. Women should pick good, better husbands. They should mm-hmm. stay at home and be traditional. Now and she's then, a single mother. Yeah, she and she ended up not just a single mother. So her one of her more recent videos which i really warmed to her like it was like two hours long and she was just yeah her her comeback essentially yeah, L- felt- lauren is actually a delightful person as a human so i'm finding this oh, whole really? thing so, very interesting so that that seems to be a bit of a change because like i remember when i watched that video and i brought it up to you and you mentioned that you'd had some trouble with her in the past oh no it wasn't her it was coming out of her show but she was lovely 
She was oh, an absolutely mm. gracious host. I mean, going yeah. on Lord, Lauren Southern as a feminist to talk about Gian Gomeshi, like that's going into the lion's den. But she was lovely. Mm. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I did see that video and her whole story, like it's, it, it is such a red, it's the perfect poster example of why the trad wife trend is so dangerous and like her her giving up her entire career so her husband could possibly move forward and Mm -hmm. keep his but but then he couldn't move forward because of her and her reputation oh really Uh uh-huh and he started to resent her and it got really bad Mm -hmm. during the lockdown and and also from i mean obviously we don't know because you never know what you know what's going on and you know between a couple but the impression I got from what she was saying at least was that that seemed to be he seemed to be the kind of guy that wanted the trad thing but didn't actually really respect women's work and I think if you if you Mm -hmm. want that you have to you have to respect that because um yeah and that's that's the thing I just find insane you'll have these men online who are so angry at women for not doing what they what they quote unquote should be doing like stay at home um you know what do doing the thing just cooking and cleaning but yeah. at the same time they will they will degrade those things and mock those yeah. things like how do you think it's like if you are telling us that doing that has no value in the world has no value in society and is and, and is contemptible then why would women want to do that because we right. want to be respected too we want value we want to prove ourselves we want to you know so i just find it insane that they'll you know one breath say you should stay at home but in the other breath say you don't contribute anything to society you're useless you shouldn't vote you're stupid you're just good for cooking and cleaning so then of course we're gonna go well i'll prove you wrong i'll prove otherwise i'll prove you that i can do other things and yes this is where you're naturally happy and mothers are so important that we have to force women to become one through various legislation god yeah (laughs) 